All right, guys, this is my laboratory. This is my workshop. This is where everything that you guys have seen me build has happened, is in here. So it is pretty small. Um, it's 14 feet wide by 20 feet long, eight feet tall. Now this is my second shop I've ever had. My last shop was actually smaller, so I have upgraded. But uh, let me show you, because dealing with small small spaces, there's a lot of things, different things that you can do to utilize your space really good. So that's why I'm gonna kind of go over some cool things that I've done. And if you wanna kind of hang out to the end, if you're about to build a shop, I got some advice on, on things you're not gonna wanna do or things that I would do differently when you build your shop. So let's go inside and let me show you what I'm talking about. All right, first thing we're gonna talk about is how I run my air, my air compressor. Where is it? It's in this little box right here. So when I built my shop, I had the intent on keeping my compressor in this corner, specifically this corner, because I wanted to be able to run air lines outside if I needed to, and I didn't want to run them all the way from the shop. So first things you want to do is, if you're going to run any kind of air, is get one of these retractable reels. They are a lifesaver. This one is only 30 feet. So which means if I would have ran it in the back, from the back of the shop, I would have only got 10 feet out there. Running it here, I can use almost all 30 feet out there to fill up tires or do anything that I need to do out there. Now onto the compressor portion. So here is the compressor area. So I pulled that lid off and here it is. So I do have some foam in here. I did insulate the inside of it and all that kind of stuff. So I put it in a box because of noise, because the compressor was really loud. In my old shop, I actually, it was a three stall garage. I converted the last stall into my shop and I kept the compressor in the garage area and I ran three-way switch to turn it on and off and I ran lines through the walls. I want to keep the noise down, especially now that I film the compressor, I want it to keep quiet as possible. I usually don't even run it if I'm filming, but uh, this is why I have it in here. Now you can see right here, I do have some pegboard here. Now this is the vent because I, I want this thing to be able to breathe. I don't want to get too hot with all of the insulation on it. As you can see on the lid, I even, I put some sound deadening stuff on there. That's how I have this set up. Now, what I did, and I think that you really, really enjoy this, is I don't want to have to come in and open up this lid every single time I want to turn it on. So when I built the shop, I had this in mind, I was going to do this, and I ran this on its own breaker. So now all I have to do to turn my compressor on is I just flip this switch, and it turns it on for me. So that's set on its own breaker. The outlet's down there, you can kind of see, you actually can see it. That's one thing that I did with my compressor that I think just, it made a lot of sense. And on top of everything else, if I put this back on, this is kind of my paint station too. So that you should have my paint. So any small paint I need to do comes here and it worked out really, really well. One thing that I would like to do is I would like to run a drain that runs out through the bottom of the box with a little twist turn valve to drain the tank. But this is the first thing that I think really is a good space saver if you have a small compressor. Now obviously in your shop, you have workbenches against the wall, but you need a work table. Something that you can go 360 degrees around to work on whatever it is that you're working on. In a small shop, the problem is with something like that is you can't really leave it in the middle of the floor because then what if it happens when you have a big project? Normally, all your wall space is already taken up. So here's what I did to solve my work table problem. I made mine come down from the ceiling. So I actually did do a video on this too. It's on the channel right now if you actually want to watch it. Um, so that is how I actually did that. So the cool thing about this is again, it's out of the way completely when you don't need it. It's just up on the ceiling. When you do need it, you come over to your winch on the wall and you drop it down. That's I've used this thing quite a bit, as you can tell by the discoloration on the top, and it's not hard to do, and bringing it back up isn't isn't that hard. The one thing I will say I wish I did is I wish I would have put the crank a little bit lower to, for ease of access, because I'm pretty short, so cranking it back up is pretty difficult, but it falls down under the saw horses. I take the cable, I unhook it, and I actually just bring it up to the top of the garage door rail, and then it's out of the way when I need it. Come around, hook it, and crank it back up. Let's move over to the back side of the shop now. Okay, let's talk like a huge positive to a small shop. Because there are a lot of negatives, but let's talk one of the big positives. It's not hard to heat. And it's not hard to maintain that heat either. What I did is I used the RV furnace that I actually installed in here. Now, 
An RV furnace was really easy because you just need a 12 volt setup, you just need propane, and you just need an exhaust. So for years I had always used torpedo heaters like this one right here, which I still do use. I use this initially to take it from 15 degrees in the shop to a comfortable 50, 55. I use that to get it up there, and then I use this to maintain it. Now, why don't I just use this? Because this stinks when you run it forever. When you run it for a long time, I start to stink, and it's also really loud when I'm filming. And then on top of that, you get really hot, you gotta shut it off, you come over, turn it on, you're constantly playing with it. So when I come out in the winter, I turn this on, I get it up to a comfortable temp, and then I turn this RV furnace on, and I have it running off of a thermostat, which is behind you guys on the wall, and I will run this thing, and I just I can set it and forget it. I don't have to. It's not super loud. It's got its own vent, so it doesn't make me stink. All I have to do is remember to turn it off when I leave. So I did do a video on this. Unfortunately, there was some problems with the footage of it, and it doesn't exist anymore. If there's any interest in me doing like a full walkthrough, I can show you guys exactly how I did this. But 12 volt system that I plug into the wall. I got a converter there, and then below here is where I keep the 20 pound tank that I run both of these off of um tank is in the garage at the moment but as you can see i have a splitter on here and i do run both of them off the same tank and i think last winter uh was my first winter using the whole thing and i went through two 20 pound tanks but this is one of my favorite hacks that i've done on my shop because it's one of this like it uh, matters a lot because a wood stove takes up a lot of space because you can't get stuff close to it um a a regular heater with a flame like that, again, in a wood shop is kind of iffy. This just seems to be kind of the way to go. Uh, I'm super happy with it. But uh, now let's take you behind me to another really nice feature that I did. And I actually did this this year. Okay, so if you've been following the channel for a little while, you'll have definitely seen this because I did just upload this a few months ago. So there is a video on this. Check that out if you're interested in this. Because one of the big things that I had in my shop that I wanted to control was the dust. I got, I'd get dust absolutely everywhere, which is the shop, so whatever, but I wanted to, to kind of delve my feet into, into controlling the dust, and I came up with a very cheap and effective system. So behind this little slide door right here lies a shop vac and a dust deputy. That's supposed to be plugged in there. So, let, you know, come over, let me show you. As you can see right here, I have the shop vac. The shop vac hose runs up and through and into this dust deputy where all of the dust actually drops through and comes off into this five gallon bucket that I just dump when it's full. Now you notice the big out hose. Let me show you about that. So that hose runs off of the dust deputy and runs to a 20 foot extension shop vac hose that I got. Now this obviously 20 foot hose, I have a 20 foot shop so I can reach all the way to the back wall with this hose. Now I didn't want it being all in the way so I slotted this out right here and I just tuck the hose back in here when I don't need it. It does fit back there. And then when I need it, I pull it out and I'm able to, to vacuum up the whole shop. Now, the thing with this system that I did is I, the reason I did it this way is that that hose fitting fits on all of my tools that I want to fit on. It fits on all of my benchtop tools, the, the bandsaw, the sander over there, and it fits on my table saw and if I really got crazy it would fit on my miter saw but I don't ever use it on the miter saw but so that's one of those little hacks that I did that I think really benefits because it keeps the shop a lot cleaner and it was super simple to do I got the vacuum off of Facebook marketplace for dirt cheap and it works fantastically I think the most expensive thing was the dust deputy it was like 40 bucks but the dust deputy just drops all of the dust into it before it gets into the vacuum that way it saves that filter vacuum so that's kind of that little upgraded and I tucked it all into that back corner where you kind of really don't have much going on in the shop and the stuff that you stick back there kind of gets forgotten about so perfect place for it and like I said the 20 foot hose makes cleanup all around the shop awesome. Let's get on to some storage things that I've done that have really benefited me over the long run so again going let's go back to a corner so a corner is where you really shove a lot of stuff and a lot of stuff gets left there and forgotten now one thing that really kind of sucks to try to store where you can see what you have is fasteners. So I have all my screws all hidden over back on these shelves right here. But my nails, and I inherited a lot of nails from my grandfather. So, and I don't use nails because it's not 1932 anymore. But I still have them and my kids use them and occasionally I'll bust them out. But what I did is this right here. And this is one of my favorite. 
I made a nail carousel. So all I did was I just got a turntable and then I did some things. So all of my nails are here and it doesn't waste any corner space. I can get to all of them. I have all the labels out so I know what they are and I can visibly see them all in the jars. That's one storage thing I did. Now let's go over behind you and let's talk about another storage thing that I think you guys will enjoy. So one thing that I've always had an issue with storing is my power tools. Power tools, my sanders, my routers, all that kind of stuff. I've always had a hard time finding like where to put them because they're gonna get full of dust. So that is why I did this. Now I found this dresser on the side of the road for free. And all I had to do was chop it down and get it installed. So that's, this is kind of an old dresser. It makes a great storage thing for all of those corded tools because it keeps them clean and then you can lay them all out and you know where they are. And if you wanted to, you could label the drawers and then you can see them. And the best part is like I said, I got that dresser for free. So that's a big upgrade that you can do in a small shop. Now let's go, and I'm going to show you just a couple small little things that I've done that are kind of cool, but kind of like, meh, well, I'm just going to add to the video for you guys. So now under your workbench lip, so this is what I did, is I have a shelf that's strictly for tape measures, and then right here I have slots for all of my files and my chisels. Now these will stay on because I have recessed magnets actually in them, so they hold everything right really well because I was having problems with them falling off when I was pounding on the workbench. Got some earth magnets from Harbor Freight, recessed them, they work great. And then also I just did another drawer right here. Now, let's go that way on the, the bench and talk about that. So here's where I have my welder, um, right underneath the workbench. Now what I did for this, and I was able to do this because I had a parts welder that I, I had, because I had this welder before that went out and I grabbed the, the ground uh, wire off of it. So you could do this if you just get yourself a different ground wiring clamp. There's I actually have this welder is clamped to the bottom bolts of this vise. So what that does for me is this is already a ground. So what, whatever I need to weld, I can throw it in here and it's grounded and I can just quickly weld it. Now for when I want to weld beyond just the vise is I have the uh, the old other grounding clamp I have that is actually attached to the bottom of the vise and it works just wonderfully. So that's just a little quick hack that I have. If you want to do some quick welding, you can throw it up here. Don't got to worry about the clamp. And now finally, let's talk about this thing. So this is my air purifier that I made. Again, it's in the same video as the dust collector that I did. It was in my phase where I decided to care about my lungs and my health and my well-being. So I made this. It's actually got three filters on it. And all it does is just a box fan. And I actually have it's wired into the lights. So all I have to do is a switch as I have a remote. Turns it on. It's not super loud but it does help filter. And I'll show you the back side of the filter right now to show you that it does suck some stuff in. You can see how nasty that thing is. So it does suck that in. And then I have it pointing towards the door. So once it sucks through, it pumps the air right out there. So that is one of the cool hacks that I did here. So now let's just, let's wrap this video up. And let's go talk about some things that I think if you're gonna build your own shop that you might wanna reconsider. Okay, so if you're building your shop, and you're looking for some advice on it. Let me give you just a couple quick pieces of advice that I wish I would have known going into this. Some research that I didn't do. So this shop is the walls are only eight feet tall. And that's a problem because most of my material is eight feet tall. Let me show you some of the ceiling marks and you'll see what I'm talking about. So when you're building a shop, go 10 feet tall on your walls. It doesn't cost that much more. It's not that much harder. It's something that I wish I would have thought about. Um, it'll just prevent you from really getting all of your sheets of plywood to go through your insulation. Or even worse is you damage the, the plywood trying to put it in. So that's one thing. And that's mainly the thing I wish mostly I would have did differently. Is I wish I would have went 10 feet on the walls instead of the 8. Alright, so let's talk about the floor now. So, uh... Again, I did the entire shot myself, so the floor, the problems I have with it is on this guy. Um, what I did was I just built a frame out of 4x4s and 2x4s, and I laid it on top of the ground. And my dad did that like 20 years ago with two of his, his sheds, and those things are fine. Mine has settled all over the place. Um, just recently, I jacked up this back corner about 3 inches. Um, it's just, I don't know why everything is settling like crazy, but... When I, had, when I did the floor, I had it just super leveled, and it was great. And then uh, over time, it's kind of moved. Um, I went with a three-quarter inch plywood on the top of it, all treated. 
obviously. Um, and I went with a thicker plywood, and I'm happy that I did that. But um, So if you're going to do a floor, do more of a footing type situation. Um, why did I go wood? The main reason was cost. Is It was a lot cheaper than going concrete. Um, I also wanted to do everything myself, and I don't do concrete. Um, I didn't have to dig any footers, so timing-wise, it went a lot faster. A lot of factors went into why I did a wood floor. Now, this won't be my forever shop, so this suffices just fine. A um, couple of... Um, of upsides to it is the fact that when I did my bear a few videos ago is literally I screwed the bolt the bear into the floor like I can screw stuff into the floor to stabilize it as I need it which is really handy compared to knocking stuff over and on top of that it doesn't like I think it it holds it doesn't have as much humidity in the air because of the concrete I, I, I could be wrong on that one but the floor is really fine for me if you're gonna go one floor go three quarter thick and do some really good footings or if not you're gonna be like me and trying to jack your shop up later on so uh, I think that's about it for these. Let's uh, go out to an outro for you. Okay, so last thing before I send you guys on to your next video, um, the last little bit I have is, is electricity. Um, you can never have too many lights, and you can never have too many outlets. Now, I put an outlet on every other or every other other stud. It looks like about the back wall where I knew I wanted a lot of stuff. I went every other stud for outlets. And then on these side walls, I went every two studs for outlets. And I still don't have quite enough outlets. If you can plan your shop out where all of your tools are going to go beforehand, make sure you're in an outlet table. Again, you can't have too many outlets. And if you, even after it's all said and done, get yourself a retractable reel like I showed you with the air hose. Get your one of those on a, as an extension cord. That thing comes in handy also. So you can never run too many lights. You can never have too many outlets. And don't skimp on the amount of power you run out to your shop. Because eventually you may want to upgrade something. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this kind of video. It was a little bit different. But I wanted to kind of show you guys the things that I did in my small shop that have worked really well for me. I hope you guys enjoyed this. On the next video I'll probably be building something. So thanks for watching.